Well, a happy Sunday to everybody. We are already in the great month of December, which of course we celebrate so many things, but we celebrate Christmas and we end the year. So, so many things that we can be thankful for and look at back at the year, I'm sure. And some things that we can say, wow, that was a hard a hard season or that was a hard month or you know there was there's probably some trials through this year that you had to walk through and maybe overcame maybe still going through those but whatever the case we're here today and just thankful that you are with us for this first Sunday of December 2023 so wanted to uh, just again thank everybody for being on if you are here for the first time, I want to thank you for being part of our our service today. This is the message that we share. It's going to be from the gospel. It's going to be from the Bible. And if you want more information or would like to let us know that you are here with us, you can uh, make a comment in the comment section. Uh, you can take a moment to reach out to us in the description below. There's our email, um, our not our email, but our web address. And then different social media platforms you can reach out to us through, uh, as well as some other links there. And if you have not already, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel. And you can know every time we're getting ready to uh, do one of our services. And so you can be updated through notifications. Also, if this is a video that you are encouraged by or just want to want to like it, we would love a thumbs up just by hitting the like button there. Other than that, I wanted to uh, jump right in here and really share from a portion of scripture that um, really speaks to me. And if you're taking notes today, you can write down the title, The Lost One, The Lost One. And I know this isn't maybe your general leading up to Christmas message, but that's okay. Well, we still have time to get there. So uh, if you have your Bible, and you want to turn there, you can turn to Luke chapter 15. If um, if you don't have a Bible, I'm going to read it and you can hear it read to you. So uh, Luke chapter 15, starting in verse 1, it starts with a parable. Now, a parable is, if you were wondering, is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Jesus taught in parables um so much. He loves telling stories that had an earthly uh, meaning, or sorry, an earthly idea, but it had a heavenly um, meaning attached to it. So um, one of the things that Jesus did is he wanted to tie people to his mission, but people are earthly and his mission was to get people to connect with him and to the things of God, which are heavenly. And so this is the way he taught. This is the way he presented things. And so as we read through this portion of scripture, just kind of have that lens on as we read and we'll explain it a little bit too. So Luke chapter 15, starting in verse one, you can turn there. It says, now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Again, a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. It says, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost. Hence our title, the lost one. Until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Just want to pray real quick as we dive into glean from the word and, and learn some truth out of this passage today. 
Lord, we thank you that you would just be here with us today, that you would be in our midst. Your word says that we're two or three are gathered or more. There you are in their midst. And so we know we're gathering at a certain time, not maybe in the same room, obviously. Maybe there's some people that are in the same room who are connecting in today. But whatever the case may be, God, we just ask for these next minutes as, as we look into your word, that you would lead us and guide us more and more into your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So speaking of, of lost ones or lost things, I most of you maybe who are, are uh, tuning in today know that Robin and I have four daughters and we have a battle almost every day to try to find socks. There might be one that's there, but then there's a lost one of the pair that we have to find. And this happens every day, even though we'd go to great lengths to put the socks together and put them up in a, a little basket or, or, you know, kind of um, um, carton up in our coat closet so that hopefully no one gets into it and, and steals the socks and hides them or, or gets them missing. But no matter what we do to try and keep these socks together, one of them always seems to wander away somehow, some way. We tell our girls, put your socks and your shoes after you're done. Somehow the socks don't end up there. And the thing is, is that every morning we don't think about the socks until we actually need it, till there's actually value. We're not thinking about, oh, let's go find our socks, um, you know, way ahead of time. It's, it's when we realize that it's lost is that we have to go search and find for it. And sometimes we don't value the socks until we actually need it. And so there's a value put on the sock in the moment when we got to go find it. And we really have this idea that, you know, there's something that that is missing and it's a value right now. And so we need to go find it. And I'm wondering if we value enough what Jesus is valuing here in this passage of lost people, of people who have wandered away, people who have maybe... Uh, been in the community or in the fold, so to speak, as a sheep, but they've wandered away. And have we realized it, one, and do we understand that it's now of high value to go find and, and seek that person? So the way Jesus is talking about this parable is to a group of people. And his hearers are the tax collectors and the sinners. And they're generally non-religious people in that day. They're, they're sinners and they're unrepentant. And then there's the critics, the Pharisees and the scribes. And they're the religious re leaders. But in Jesus speaking, this parable really brings them into it as sinners and unrepentant as well. Because they have not put their trust and hope in Christ. They've put their trust in their religiosity and their to-do lists and their laws that they've created far and above what God ever wanted them to. And Jesus, knowing exactly who he was talking to and who the audience was, he masterfully brings them all into the story with how he starts the parable in verse 4. And he starts it by saying, what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lost one of them, does not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. He ties all of them in and says, hey, which one of you aren't a decent person? Which one of you wouldn't value something that was lost that was of value to you? Because in that day, if you were a shepherd, your sheep provided not only wool, but clothing, meat, milk. They were very valuable. And so if you lost one, you were going to lose income. You were going to lose your livelihood. And so there was a value on that. And so Jesus is saying, which one of you, even though some of you think you're, you're righteous, some of you 
know your sinners and know that groups of people hate you because you're the tax collectors who really are fraudulent in receiving more money than you really should from the people, your own people. And so he knows who he's speaking to, but he all brings them onto the same playing field of saying, which, which man of you would not be decent in this way and go search for your lost sheep, which is a value to you. And I'm sure all of them thought, well, yes, like I, I would do that. I guess I would be reasonable enough to, um, if I was a shepherd, to value the sheep I was leading. And so if one was lost and I could secure the other 99 and keep them safe in the open country and go find the one, then yeah, that seems like a reasonable thing to do. So he, he kind of takes down their guards. He puts them all on one page. He takes down their guards to think about an earthly scenario so that he can bring some heavenly meaning into this. And if we're going to receive some advice from Jesus, uh, shepherding advice here, or seeking and, and hopefully finding advice here, then we should value what Jesus values. Jesus is saying through this parable that he values the lost. He values the lost one. Whether it's one or a hundred that are lost, he has value for the lost. He wants to seek and to save the lost. Luke 19.10 says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. That's why he came to earth, was to seek and to save the lost. So he has a value upon the lost people or the lost one. And it doesn't mean he doesn't value the 99. The 99 are secure. The 99 are safe. The 99 in the parable really means those 99 are already going to heaven. But if there's one that's not on their way to heaven, we have to step away from those who are already secure in their salvation and find that lost one. And what does that mean? That we shouldn't gather together as believers? No, we need a community to bring the lost one back into but the interesting thing is, is that Jesus says there is more joy, there's more rejoicing in heaven for one sinner that comes to know me than the 99 that are already on their way to heaven. Now, that doesn't mean you weren't celebrated when you came to Christ. You were the one. And so you were celebrated. Now you are one who can go and celebrate others. And so we can't get it mixed up in our heads of what Jesus, Jesus still values those who are following him. But there's a value put on the um, person who is lost because they have not found yet what we have found. If Jesus came to seek and save the lost, we too should seek the ones who are lost. It can sound overwhelming for some of us, but really, if we just follow what Jesus is saying here, we really just have to go after one. He doesn't say go after the hundred that are lost. He says... Go after the one that is lost. Is there one person in your life that you know is lost? And you could say, who's my one person that I can be praying for, that I can be seeking to connect with more, or maybe seeking out to build a bridge with them or a relationship, a friendship with them so that you can share the gospel and you're now seeking that one that is lost. You're looking for them. If we could just find one, one person, it's it, the 99 in this parable aren't the ones who need the message. It's the one person. I put up two fingers. Maybe for one of you, there's, there's two people. But there's one person that all of us may know who needs to hear the truth of the gospel. Who is your one? Is there someone in your life you know who needs Jesus. If not, I would encourage you to ask the Lord to open your eyes and to connect you with someone who, or put in your mind someone who does need Jesus so that you can pursue them and look for them and find them in this next season. And here's a scripture to encourage you that Jesus has actually, he's behind us in going to find 
lost ones. He says in Mark 16, 15 through 16, he says, And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not will be condemned. And so he's, he's saying, you go. You go proclaim the gospel to everyone you can. Start with one. Whoever believes will be baptized and saved, but whoever will not will be condemned. And so the results are in, in, the, in their decision. You go, you proclaim to everyone you can, starting with one. Let's, let's get that straight. Let's, let's start with one. But whoever believes is going to be saved. Whoever doesn't is going to be condemned. And that's between them and God. But you went after the one. Another thing we should really think about if we're going to do things like Jesus is we should carry the found ones on our shoulder. In the passage of scripture in the parable, it says the shepherd found the sheep, put the sheep on his shoulder. He didn't, he didn't say you bad sheep, you're going to, I'm going to hit you with my staff all the way home. No, he put him on his shoulders and carried the sheep home. Now, this isn't a, a picture of enabling the lost person in maybe some sinful things they need to change in their life or a codependency kind of Christianity. We carry them into what God has for them. So we can connect them with other believers. We can connect them with a, a, a ministry. We can connect them with other church people in our life. We can connect them to the word of God. So we're carrying them now. It's a discipling of, hey, I'm going to carry you for a little bit till I can connect you to the community that God is building. The shepherd carried the sheep until he got back to the fold and the sheep was now back into the community of sheep there. The shepherd didn't, didn't find the sheep and 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 say now you walk home i never want to see you lost again don't ever do this again he didn't say you know how long i was looking for you you could have gotten killed the shepherd didn't didn't abuse the sheep he picked up the sheep and carried it on his shoulders and he was rejoicing it says he picked it up put it on his shoulders rejoicing like thank god i found the lost one the other thing is, if we're going to take Jesus' advice out of this and be like him, is we should celebrate like Jesus celebrates. Jesus was always labeled as someone who was connecting with the wrong crowd, or wow, he eats and drinks too much, or he's doing this too much. And he enjoyed the time he was here on earth. Yes, he had a mission, though. And he, he, he was out reaching the lost and, and he was celebrating the lost ones that came in heaven celebrates. And so we should celebrate what Jesus celebrates and of course celebrate like he celebrates, not out of control, but within the constructs of scripture. And here's the thing is how Jesus kind of ties the the parable now, the earthly story into a heavenly meaning. Jesus not only asked them what they would do if they were the shepherd, he goes on to the heavenly meaning. And really the heavenly meaning behind this is, I'm the shepherd, you are the sheep, and all of heaven rejoices when just one of you sheep are found. And here's the thing. The Bible also backs up the idea that he is the good shepherd. John 10, 11 says, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus is saying that about himself. He says, I'm the shepherd. And then the Bible confirms that we're the sheep as well. In Isaiah 53, 6, it says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So all of us are the sheep in this story. We can be either the lost one or the found one back in the fold that is ready to receive the ones who are lost. 
And if you didn't know this, you might already know this, but sheep are horrible with directions. They don't naturally know where to go. They need a shepherd to lead them. They'll literally follow their fellow sheep right off of a cliff. There's stories of sheep that are looking for greener pastures and greener grass that literally just one by one, they you can watch on YouTube videos, they're just falling off of a cliff. There was a story of, of I think it was um, about 50 sheep that the first 20 of them, I think, perished, but they were stuck in like a rock, a rocky crag, like crevice in the rocks and uh, 20 of them fell first and perished but the other 30 still kept falling and they survived because they were landing on these other fluffy sheep but they still not one of them stopped to look and see is this a good idea they just kept following one another right over the cliff and unfortunately almost half of them died and so sheep in general don't know where to go, what to do. And so we need the direction of the Holy Spirit. We need the direction of Jesus. We need him as our good shepherd. We need to not just follow blindly the things that, that are in front of us or what we think we're, we're wanting to go after. And so there's a peace and understanding when you're found that Jesus is leading you and that he's guiding you. And I want to offer this closing to, to two groups of people. Jesus was speaking to two groups of people in his story. Ones that thought they were okay. The others who were blatantly sinners. And so that, that's two groups of people. But I also want to bring it to us who know we are saved. And know that we're part of the 99 who are found. That we would begin to seek after those those ones. And then my question to those who are not found by Jesus, yet you, you don't know him as your Lord and Savior. The question would be, first off, have you been found yet? Because all of us like sheep have gone astray. And so at some point we have to be found. If you're not found, then I want to let you know that Jesus loves you so much. He came to earth to seek and to save those who are lost. And what does the lost mean? It means they are not found in a relationship with Jesus that pours out your heart saying, I believe in you. I know I'm a sinner. I need forgiveness. I need to be cleansed. You're, you're repentant of your current life and turning to him repentance means you're turning completely the other way and so if you're if you're living a life away from Jesus you're now going to turn and follow him and ask for forgiveness of your sins and know that he's washed you and cleansed you and has a purpose for you so if you have not been found then this message is for you if you are found and part of the kingdom of God already this message is for you in the way of let's go find the one. Let's let's close in prayer today. Lord, we thank you for you speaking to us today. We know that many of us have been found by you today that are on here watching and listening. But there may be some of us who have not been found yet, and I pray that you would reach them right now. And in fact, if if you sense it you are one of those lost ones and you know it in your heart and you you feel the Holy Spirit tugging you towards him. And I want you to pray this prayer. Just repeat it after me. Maybe you don't know how to kind of express what you're saying, but you want to believe in Jesus. And so here's some words we can say for you to begin that journey with Jesus. Just simply say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know I need to be forgiven. So please forgive me of all my sin. I believe that you came and you died and you rose again so that you could be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me, accepting me, and now saving me. 
I want to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're so happy for you if you prayed that prayer literally and you meant it in your heart and you believe it and you're now um, going to live a life following Jesus and all of heaven is celebrating for you. There's more celebration in heaven for one that is found than for 99 that are already found. And so we're celebrating with you. And please let us know if you prayed that prayer and you would like us to continue to pray for you and just support you in this decision that you made. Again, I want to just encourage all of us, if we are already in the kingdom and found, let's pray that God would show us to the ones that we can help find. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Just before we close, I just want to thank you again for being on today. And for those of us who call Live Church home, uh, you you already know that you can um, sow into the ministry and give your tithes and offerings at alivechurchnyc.com slash give. If you're new, um, you don't have to feel pressure to, to give anything. This isn't a, oh, you watched and now you have to give. But if you do feel compelled to maybe uh, give and to start tithing, we believe in tithing. We believe that the word of God is very clear that if we tithe, that the windows of heaven will open up over us and pour out a blessing we can't contain. And that if we give, we're stretching beyond ourselves into generosity and that God is honored in our generosity. God gives seed, which in, in that term means God gives resources to people who sow generously into what he's doing here on the earth. And so if you'd like to give today to a live church, you can give at alivechurchnyc.com slash give. Uh, you can also mail that in if you prefer. You just need to reach out to us first at our website and we can send you uh, the details of how to mail that in. Uh, you can reach out to us through our uh, contact page on AliveChurchNYC.com. And uh, once again, if you want to connect with us, let us know maybe a decision that you made today to follow Jesus. We'd love to hear that. And you can reach out to us by the... Um, our website by the contact page. So once again, God bless you guys. If this was uh, ministering to you and encouraging to you, send it along to some friends, maybe hit the like button before we go. And uh, God bless you. As always, hope you enjoy the rest of your Sunday and we'll see you next Sunday.